Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back We're to the Real Rat Pack Show. We are live. By the way, you can call in at 800-808-5548 and ask us a question and ask any one of our great guests they're here. They're live. You we have some great questions. expertise in the house today. That is correct. We really do. You know, and, and the next one we've got, uh, let me tell you, Ash A. B. Bowles, Ashley Bowles. He's one of our great sponsors and also one of the premier home inspectors out there. Ashley, how you doing, buddy? Uh, not bad. How you guys doing today? Man, doing pretty good. You know what I could really use for the new year, though? It'd be some of those lobsters again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I could, use, I could use some of those myself. Yeah, we got to call your parents back up, man. That's right. <laughs> it's the only time they're allowed to come to Texas. Well, you know, the, the one thing I can tell everybody is not only is the Rat Pack about informing everybody, but we also form very good, strong friendships. We're not only uh, friends on the show, but we're a lot of, we hang out a lot after the show. And let me tell you, Ashley is a great inspector out there. Actually, you know, one of the things we're talking about today is what you don't know can hurt you. Last time you were on the show, you gave us a lot of good information. Obviously, we've been speaking with, with Shally about what's going on in the realtor community. We have been speaking with Tony about pest uh, control, everything going on there. What are some of the new things going on, or what are some of the things you anticipate for 2014 from an inspection perspective? Well, I just it's just going to be a boom market. I mean, I expect it. Well, everyone expected things to slow down over the holidays. And it just hasn't happened. It's just been still steady, steady. Uh, I was getting calls on New Year's Day. People wanted to book and schedule inspections, and they want everything done, and they want it done quick. Right. And, you know, and, and, and you know, the good thing is the good thing is the business is out there, right? But quick and getting it done yesterday and trying to get you to get through something really fast isn't necessarily the best thing either. You know, what you don't know can hurt you means is that you also need to be able to make sure that you take time and that a client gives you an opportunity to do an inspection the correct way. Well, and that comes up, that comes to scheduling. I mean, people really, if you're going to get an inspection done, you're going to have to call ahead of time. There, it's going to be hard for you to call up and say, hey, I need an inspection done tomorrow or today. It's going to take you a long time. to. You're going to be calling a lot of people to get that scheduled. And then the thing, too, is you want to make sure that the inspector has time to actually go do a full inspection on the house. Right. Which is really important because, you know, I've used other inspectors in the past, and, you know, I think... Ashley's there usually f- like four or five hours on a house, uh, and when he writes a report, it is very detailed, and that's because he takes his time to do it. And in fact, you kind of limit yourself usually to one a day most of the time. A lot correct? of the time, depending on the age of the home as well, because an older home has more, there's going to be more issues, you know, because of code changes and things that, you know, a lot of people don't realize that they have to maintain their home. You don't just live in your house. You have to do maintenance on it to keep it where it's supposed to be. Well, you know, on the on the subject earlier that I was talking about, I didn't know. I was unaware of the the leak that the toilet had. I don't know if there would be any way I could know that. Um, it's outside of my expertise. Let me put it that way. <laughs> but are there are there things like that? You know, where uh, is there something that a homeowner I didn't know? So it did hurt me. It did cost me. I had termites and had to deal with them a couple times. Um, is, is there anything like that that uh, from uh, the, the dealing well, with the pests that we can look for? With your where was it depends on where the <laughs> toilet is. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of stop me for a minute. There's so many things going through my mind. Right, like, right. Well, if it's you know if your toilet's leaking on the second floor, usually you'll start to see a stain, or you'll you'll notice usually. Uh, if you look up, you'll see a little brown spot on the ceiling. That's usually signs of moisture and water. If it, you have a drain that's leaking on the first floor because a lot of times, like they were saying earlier, uh, there's supposed to be an access hatch around your tub so you can in- in look at the drain. So, hmm. And that's an access point as well for termites to come in through into your house or insects because it's not all concrete. So they come up underneath and around your tub, the drain, it's all, it is moist. And that's what they're looking for. Yeah, and and that's, that's a good point. You know, one of the things... You know, it, it, we talk about all the time is, you know, some things you can see by the naked eye. You know, and in Joe's case, he just wasn't paying attention, right? So we all know that. But <laughs> in wow. other cases, threw him under the bus, didn't you? <laughs> just messing with him. But in other cases, though, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in inspection that you can't see. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is, I can't tell you still today how many people 
well, I'll, I'll ask them. I'll say, well, you're going through an option period, and uh, let me know when you have a home inspection done. And they will tell me is we're not planning on having one. And, I, you know, let us know, you know, talk about those things that an inspector is going to find that people generally cannot see. Because we have a lot of people sometimes will say, well, I went through the home myself. It looks absolutely fine. Just because it looks fine from a physical perspective doesn't mean that it works fine from an operational perspective. Right. Well, there's a lot of things that people, they really don't know. They look at it, it looks pretty, but things that make, things that are standards, uh, like for a second story of a house in a bedroom, the window has to be 5.7 square feet, clear opening. And people put little, people put screws in there to hold the, keep the window shut, and they think they're trying to secure their house. But what they're doing is they're actually stopping the egress of the house. If the house ever caught fire and you're stuck upstairs, you need to be able to either get out the window or someone should be able to get you out of the window. So you always have to make sure that the window is oper- it, uh, uh, it operates. Yeah. And here's one thing I always talk about. You know, I see some people, the, often, you know, I think in this, this market, a 10-day option period is fairly typical that you uh, can get on a contract. Correct. And then some people will wait four or five days to get their inspection. And here's the problem is that you're – it's never going to be a love sonnet. Actually, this is stealing from Tony because he always has this little speech. It's not going to be a love sonnet. In fact, it's going to sound like the house is falling apart. You're probably going to have another a series of negotiations based on what you find. And, you know, waiting too long will kind of take that freedom of having to, to negotiate away from you. So, I mean, what's your lead time typically? Well, I, usually, my, I, I always guarantee to have my report the next day unless it's a, an enormous house. And, you know, if I'm doing a house that's 8,000 square feet, it's going to take a little longer to generate that report because it took that much longer to do the actual inspection. Um, but I think the biggest thing is is to get it done as soon as possible during the transaction. That way you have time to go over the information in the report because you're going to get – you're getting bombarded with a ton of information. Some stuff is going to be important to you. Some stuff is not. Well, I'm always worried about safety issues and things like that. You were talking about code – uh, and I know Joe's over here percolating with the question, but uh, <laughs> you talked a minute ago. It was a great segue. Code changes. So is, are you seeing anything new in the codes that, that we're going to be aware need to be aware of right now? Not right now. Okay. Not right now. There, I haven't seen any major things coming up, but like they change quite frequently. It's uh, they brought in in two thousand. I believe it was two thousand two. They started bringing in arc fault protectors. In two thousand eight, they changed the code again that you have to have. Any area of your house that's in a habitable space where you live, uh, if it's not GFC uh, ground, ground ground fault circuit interrupters, yes, yeah. easy for you to say, right? <laughs> well, if it doesn't have, if it's not a wet location, it needs to be have an arc fault. Now, now let me ask you a question because a lot of these codes he are violated for, the rules, Rob. I'm yes, sorry, exactly. Yeah. I can't lot, control. Well, no, it was it was going <laughs> off of the same question that we had. Was you know a lot of times these codes that are going in though are for new homes that are being built. How do you address it with homes that are already built or have, you know, 10 or 15 years and yet you've got these new codes in place? Well, safety safety. Bottom line, if, if it's a safety or a, a hazard, it's going to change anyway, and we still write it up. There's no real – there's it's not such thing as really, like, grandfathered in. If it's a safety issue, it's a safety issue. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't point. understand that. Is that. We actually have a, a kind of a, a disclosure piece. It's like you're going to – See things there that were not they were code at the time, but it's not code now. And the GFCI is probably the number one thing I think of is because houses built in the eighties they didn't have GFCIs on right. them. And so, and so I always talk with my clients and say, look, they're going to write this up, and I already know what the, what's going to be on some of the safety issues on that because the code changed. I said it doesn't mean the house is bad; it just means the code changed, and you need to be aware of that. Right, and I, I try to tell people that before I do the inspection too. Uh, there's going to be things that I write up in there. That really may not – it was fine when the house was built, and it's still working just fine, but I have to note that in my report so that the consumer knows. And that respect the narrative. Now, now to Joe A. Joe Orsag, remember the, what your question, question was. Had, <laughs> uh, the question I had is this, that, that you know, we, we are in the, in the industry, and we always think of the process of buying and selling. But we have a huge listening audience that uh, is neither buying nor selling. And they're just in their home. So this may be a, a very self-serving question for you, but I, I have a genuine interest in, in knowing it. Uh, is there an advantage or a need or a benefit for uh, our listeners who have been in their home for five, ten years? Oh. And 
just to get a home inspection, not because they're buying or selling, but just to have some expert eyes checking well, the place the, out. The thing is, it doesn't have to be a full blown inspection. They can just have someone come out and do do a, a maintenance inspection on their house to see what needs to be done. Inspection. I mean, because most people they don't go up into their attic and well, look I, around. They don't check the roof. They don't check well, their TP right, hole. It, it is the name of the show. What you don't know can hurt you, right? Uh, one of my pet peeves in my industry is when. Uh, you know, our government requires me to tell our clients that it's something they can do themselves. Well, yeah, absolutely. And all the knowledge out there to to work on improving your credit, it's it's out there. But if you don't know what to look for, you have no idea what you're missing. I I can look at a credit report and say, well, it looks accurate to me. I I, I don't know what's missing, right? Same thing with home inspection. I don't know what to look for. I can walk around the house and go, I'm going to look at the roof. Okay, a bunch of shingles. (laughs) It looks great. Roof is is one of the most commonly (laughs) overlooked things because a lot of people don't get up on the roof. And I know if it's a real steep pitch, you use binoculars. But, you know, nails pop up. Uh, and I mean, I can see obvious stuff, lifting. you know, I mean, if there's a hole in the doggone shingles, I'm going to go, well, that probably isn't good. But well, it's like when you're looking, look when, for. when you go up on the roof, uh, there's sometimes there's things that you really can't see unless you're up a little bit closer. You'll start, you'll, if you see a lot of the shingles are kind of tilted or they're not lined up perfectly anymore, that could be signs of previous wind damage. So uh, there's a lot of things on a roof that you're looking for, different types of flashing, uh, your underlayment. People, I see issues with roofs all the time. Pretty much every one I go on, I see something. Yeah, the, 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 you see a lot of curling. There's about a, you know, a 30-year roof in Houston probably going to last 15 years because we have a pretty harsh environment. But you start seeing right. it loses the granularity. Mm-hmm. It starts curling at the ends. Well, I'd, I'd imagine, too, that this is, you know, but Tony probably won't like me saying this one because <laughs> it may limit his business. But, you know, moisture being one of those things that the termites are looking for and all that sort of thing, I would imagine that uh, a roof that's not, properly maintain or has those opportunities for moisture to get in is one of the central sources for moisture and, and creating Of course, that could happen anyway with, 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 with dry wood termites. Isn't that right? So, I mean, they don't always have to have moisture. There's another there's 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 a a species of opportunity of, for moisture in there's, there's other opportunities <laughs> out there. So, well, you start getting hail damage, wind damage. Your roof, once your roof is gone, you're allowing the all the elements to get into your house. And it starts, it'll just... It'll ruin your house. Well, we're down to under a minute here already. Again, it's just crazy Again. how time flies. It, it, so you do maintenance? Uh, yes, sir. Maintenance uh, inspections. Well, there, there you go. There's something well, I highly would recommend, well, uh, at least for people like me. I don't know what I'm looking for. So, uh, Kim, get get him to uh, do that inspection, and and well, first, uh, we're going to uh, pay. We're going to pay Ashley. And, uh, <laughs> <in my house. laughs> tell Ashley <laughs> make sure you, that yeah, <laughs> tell her that, she, that you need to sell this house and buy her a new house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it reminds me of the old adage. Remember that 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 email that went around for a long time. It said. What the buyer perceives their home as, what their seller perceives their home as, yes. the appraiser. Yes. That's one of the most classic pictures everywhere, right there. So. Ashley, how do, how do folks get a hold of you for a maintenance inspection or anything else for that? Well, matter? they can call me. Uh, my number is 832 306 3723. And here in the near future, I should have a website up. That way people can contact he, me on He's been too busy to exactly. set up a website. That, that <laughs> thing's just a fad. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> AB Bowls with AB Home Inspectors. We're coming up against a break right now. Stay tuned. We'll be back for our last segment in a few moments. Blend into the sky.